Hello YouTube, this is the revised version of my Witcher trailer reaction. This one is obviously going to be less of a reaction since I've already seen it and more of a advanced analysis since uh, since the last time I uh, got across a few more information bits about who the characters that we see here actually are and a few more uh, indications on what the scenes actually are that we witness here and uh, since I also know now the time frame of the first season which is probably all this uh, trailer is going to cover I also know a little bit more of what possible scenarios are and what aren't so let's get right into it but for one first warning the other video was removed because of the massive outcry and racism accusations that were under that video if that happens again since i am going to criticize the ethnicity of certain actors here if that happens again you will be removed from the channel your comment will be deleted i'm not in the mood for any of that crap if i criticize the ethnicity of someone that is for me a part of their outer look just as much as their hair color eye color height gender or any other physical attribute if you consider that actually some kind of protected thing that's probably your north american issues talking i'm european so i'm not into that kind of garbage for me it's simply a part of how someone looks nothing more than that so let's get right into it This first scene is basically just Geralt walking through any kind of town that could be pretty much anywhere but since it starts the trailer this might also be the start for the actual stories which was the first one the the Witcher was the first one actually called where Geralt walks through Vizima so that could be it uh, on the way to his uh, first uh, encounter with some uh, scum inside a tavern could be it of course we do not know he has his sword in hand though as it seems so he might already get ready for action so this might also possibly be blaviken where he's already in um anticipating trouble I remember hearing stories about witches not sure what that's that was exactly that He's fighting something there in the corridor. I can't really make that out. Could be the Striga, could be something else. No, that actually seems to be a person. So I'm not sure who this is. Sit. Not gonna zoom into every scene. Um, I'm just gonna mention this like last time. People have uh, told me I'm actually nitpicky on the medallion. I'm actually not nitpicky. What I did in the last video was actually defend the medallion. Because I've seen a lot of talk online where people say, oh my god, why is the medallion different from the games? Well, the medallion is actually described in the books as a round medallion showing a wolf uh showing its fangs it doesn't say whether we see the wolf in profile or from the front or anything we also don't know if it's a flat medallion just showing the wolf or the entire medallion is round but actually forming the wolf it's basically completely up for interpretation i've seen this design on book covers so it might be closer to the author in case the book cover designer and artist actually consulted the author which is only sometimes the case most of the time that actually isn't the case from author interviews that i've heard they usually don't have any kind of influence on the book cover whatsoever uh, the witcher tv show in poland uh, that came out uh, before the first game actually also had a medallion that actually formed a wolf's head so a little bit like in the games it didn't look exactly like that a little bit more rounded on the edges um, but it was already such a design so if you want to say the games got the design wrong well the polish tv show actually got the design wrong first so it, basically it's completely open for interpretation this show actually consulted the author at least in the beginning so this might be Sapkowski's vision so it doesn't really matter any medallion that shows a wolf blinking its fangs is actually mostly accurate and in line with the books true what they say elves are the original sorcerers of the continent Yes, and here I said that last time already, These the voiceover is talking about elves, but these are actually not elves. Um, we're in the middle of a forest, 
these look like tribal people and uh, Siri is with them. I'm pretty sure these are actually supposed to be dryads, especially since they're a little bit dressed in greens and browns. Um, not sure about their dark skin because that's actually not fitting because the dryads actually kidnap human girls and turn them into uh, dryads. And that doesn't change their appearance. The book clearly says that they have naturally brown, sometimes even blue eyes, brown hair, blonde hair. So sometimes even natural dryads have these hair colors uh, but mostly it's uh, kidnapped human girls and usually their their hair is a little bit green. And uh, since they are kid mostly kidnapped girls by now, or at least to a large degree kidnapped girls, uh, they should all be white. But again, ethnicity is something I'm going to criticize because it just doesn't make any sense. These actually look like a little bit more tribal African warriors. That's not... That's not what they should be looking like. Also, they're wearing metal bracelets here and metal things on their bodies. I'm pretty sure that dryads actually do not use any metal because how are you actually going to use this? How are you going to make that metal? In order to make that metal, you need a furnace. You need somehow something to melt that. That means fire. Dryads do not make fire. They do not burn wood or coal or anything like that. Definitely not. They do not dig in the earth to get to coal, uh, to get to stone coal or whatever charcoal is completely out of the question because they don't burn wood. So a lot of this already doesn't make any sense. All the earrings, seriously, if these are dryads and they're actually wearing earrings, that's yeah, if they're not dryads and they're actually elves, but then I'm wondering why the round ears. I'm pretty sure these are dryads, and in that case, their entire look does not fit at all. When humans are There's again a black rider. I'm going to say that time and time again. Blacks do not have any place in the Witcher unless they're from any of the southern parts of the continent, south of Nilfgaard, or possibly Zeracania, although the Zeracanians have a little bit more brown skin, not black. We've, well, actually, we don't know exactly what they look like, but they're mentioned a little bit in this story with the Golden Dragon. Um... Some people have pointed out, I don't actually remember those places in the books, that the Nilfgaardians actually consider uh, people from the other parts of the continent actually barbarians. So anybody, any Nilfgaardian, last time I said maybe darker skinned people could be possibly from Nilf Nilfgaard since they're more southern European from the uh, geographic region and the climate. So that would make a little bit more sense. But yes, those would only be Mediterranean looking completely black. Does not make any sense. And uh, people have pointed out, which I can actually agree with, that Emmy of M race would absolutely not tolerate anybody black in his army or anyone like that because the Guardians consider those ethnicities and those cultures as barbaric. So that doesn't work at all. I'm not even sure who this is, but... Yes, uh, that doesn't fit whoever she is. I think. Or oh, he. I can't actually see that. I think it was a she. Now, this is a sorceress that we see in the book. She's actually the leader of the. Uh, from what I remember, this actress being. I uh, looked through a little bit through the cast. She is the head of the sorceress's school. This is obviously Yennefer. Um, and uh, they're good friends later on when Yennefer thinks about putting Siri in the school as well. But uh, that's for later. That's not going to happen in the first season. Yennefer's look, black hair is fine. Actually, this should be a little bit... She should have a little bit more locks. Uh, the talk is about her raven locks. So she has a little bit too much straight hair. I'm not going to criticize hair color too much unless in places where it actually is important to the lore, because the hair color is not only mentioned, but also has a certain significance. The raven locks of Yennefer are mentioned several times. Also, this doesn't really seem like raven color, but it's dark enough, so it's fine. Her face, however, triangular face kind of works. For me, she looks a little bit too young. In this scene, however, for early on, this might 
make sense because here she's in training and she's actually supposed to be something like a teenager but uh, she should have very pale skin the entire black and white contrast in Jennifer's appearance both in her face in her entire clothing and a little bit in her character she's a woman of extremes of uh, completely switching back and forth she's very bitchy she's very arrogant and at the same time she longs to be a mother so there's a lot of nurturing in her and a lot of coldness in her as well so this kind of contrast within the woman is kind of reflected in her looks and that is intentional so taking that away is a little bit problematic i've seen scenes where in the right lighting she actually looks almost right the problem for me is still if she looks this young in the other scenes when she's acting against gerald that doesn't fit for me she should actually be looking a little bit older than he does maybe not older but she should look closer in age to his at least Maybe not so much from the body and the face, but you should get that maturity across. So far, I haven't seen that in the scenes, so we'll see how that works out. That will depend on entirely on the actress and how she acts in those scenes. We haven't seen enough of that yet, so that will be uh, up for the future. So arrived. Elves taught the humans how to turn chaos into magic. Another thing that I mentioned last time was that here they said the, the elves were the first sorcerers on the continents and then the humans arrived together with the monsters. That is not according to the lore. According to the lore, magic was introduced together with the uh, conjunction of spheres where the humans and the monsters arrived. So before that happened, there was no magic, so there couldn't have been any sorcerers. And then... This, I think, this scene might be in the. Uh, um, this might be at the court of Sintra. This might be someone attacking uh, the uh, hedgehog. But I'm not 100% sure since I don't see any markings here. But I think that's where this is. The humans slow the. And this is again something that I do not like at all. Before, I did not know who this was supposed to be. But now I know this is actually supposed to be uh, Istrid, the lover of Yennefer, her, uh, the second person. If you watch my lore series, The Shard of Ice, <clears throat> then you will know this person um, is actually another long-eared lover of Yennefer. And she has trouble deciding between him and Geralt. That he is black, again, he actually lives far in the north, he actually lives in one of the northern kingdoms. So him being black makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Chaos is That's the sorcerer's school of Aretusa. Um, <clears throat> I'm not so sure about the location here. It is supposed to be in the course on, on an island. But um, it's actually supposed to be close to a city, and I'm not sure about this city. I'd have to read again about it on what is located. This seems a little bit too secluded for me. From what I know, there's actually supposed to be some villages uh, pretty close to here. So be this being on such a cliff face seems a little bit weird to me. The, from what I know, this city... Uh, of course, Velen, from what I remember, this should be Gors Velen, I think, is actually, yeah, a, a fishing town. Uh, pretty, I think there's actually a fleet here or something. So somehow about something about this confuses me. This is about right, the tower itself. This is weird. This thing, this thing itself is weird. Is the most dangerous thing. Siri here looks pretty good. Um, she should, from the uh, time, uh, time frame that I know the first season will cover, Siri should, in these stories, range from 6 to 12 years old, depending on which part they will cover. Most parts in which Siri actually plays a major role, she should be between 10 and 12. I can see that. I can see this actress looking in this shot about that age, so that should work. Her ashen blonde hair works very well. 
I think in The Witcher they're actually a little bit too too light. She's actually not so have supposed to have white hair like Geralt, which she doesn't in the game, but it's more ash in color, so it should be more kind of ash and blonde, which works. Emerald eyes, yeah, kinda. Depends on the lighting here. They look a little bit more blue, but I think they're green, so that works as well. So we'll see. In this world. Siri is probably the uh, the casting that I like the most. Geralt is also a little bit too bulky in my uh, in my opinion. But without control. <clears throat> Sorry. The uh, scene here is again about Yennefer having massive depressions, about being a hunchback, about being rejected by her family and all that. So that they play that out here in a greater scale, that they are going to focus on all three characters, Siri. Geralt and Yennefer at the same time is actually something that the later novels did. The short stories focus very much on Geralt, um, so they have to take some liberties here because they're only going to cover the short stories in the first season, but later on they're going to cover the actual novels, and those are in fact focusing on all three characters, and sometimes you go page after page, chapter after chapter without ever hearing of Geralt, and that actually puts some readers off at, at first. Um, so that is very realistic that they're going to take this approach uh, early on. Again, as, as they only cover the short stories, they have to take some liberties to fill in the gaps, but uh, they seem to reference things that are mentioned in the novels later. So I think that's a good thing. Chaos will kill you. That's Geralt attacking the Strigger with the ch silver chain. That's uh, from his uh, contract that made him famous. So that's all. This I didn't like at first. This looks like planted trees. Um, this doesn't look like a natural forest. Now this might be the entrance to some building where he's riding away and this is actually the entrance to a castle or whatever or to an estate. In that case this would make sense but this, if this is just a path through a normal forest then I think this doesn't look medieval. So we'll have to see and and uh, what this actually is. To me, there's not enough underbrush here. This looks like a tree plantation. This doesn't actually look like a medieval forest, but uh, we'll have to see where this is exactly. All life is for you. Monsters and money. It's now, if I remember correctly, then this is the Triss actress. I actually, uh, it's interesting that she has this green dress on. This was actually a modded dress <laughs> for her appearance in The Witcher 1, from what I remember. This was, uh, they modded in a dress like this. I'm not sure why, if a dress like this was ever mentioned for her in the books, and or whether that's coincidence, or whether these guys got inspired from the game, I don't know. Uh, but that's just something I noticed. Obviously, Triss being, uh, Triss having dark uh very dark hair and uh yeah not being very light-skinned obviously doesn't fit the uh tris that we know at all again i'm gonna mention it she's supposed to have chestnut colored hair not auburn i even translated the original polish it's chestnut which uh yes can be a darker brown but it's more like the horse coat uh in a medieval setting so it's a more the, the reddish chestnut and the actual chestnut hair color for women covers quite a range it can be more red it can be more dark but this isn't even brown and uh, she's also described as looking like a teenager this woman does not look like a teenager for me she actually looks older than Yennefer which which should be exactly the other way around so I'm not happy with this casting whatsoever. Some money. It's all it needs to be. Something out there waits for you. This is actually the court of Sintra from what I remember. I looked up actually the three lions that are, that is Sintra. That's actually why Calanthe is called the lioness of Sintra. And series later I called the lion cub of Sintra because of the lions. So yes, this is probably Calanthe. The problem I have with Geralt is that he looks a little bit too angry all the time. Geralt in the books is actually a lot insecure sometimes, melancholic most of the time. He's not usually angry or anything like that. He's either polite or melancholic or sometimes even insecure and boyish almost, almost a little bit naive because he kind of stays away uh, from humanity for the most part and just uh, is on the path on his own and he obviously grew up at Kaer Morin completely away from people so he's he's not socially unskilled but he's not um, 
yeah, he's not really someone that fits in easily. This child will be. And this is actually something that I'm absolutely not sure about. I, I looked it up, and this is supposed to be Mausak, the druid. Now, they never really mention his age in the books, I believe. But this guy looks a little too young for the role. I don't, I just don't know. The, I, I would imagine the druid being a little bit more older and matured and anything like that. Obviously, there can be middle-aged druids. Obviously, they have to go uh, <laughs> through life at some point. But I always imagined Malsak to be a little bit older. But that might be uh, being influenced by the games. I'm not actually sure. But... Um, We'll have to see. Certainly, if Masag is alive in the games, which play about 20 years after this scene, he would be 20 years older than this, and by that time he would be great. So that would actually fit. So I'm actually not sure how old druids can get, whether they also have life a longer life expectancy because of some magic tricks or whatever, like sorcerers, I do not know. But um, yes, if this guy was at this age, at this time, he would actually look a little bit gray in The Witcher 3, which is about 20 years after this. So that might work. Extraordinary. Yeah. I still wish you would already be 10, uh, 10 years older like this already. I have still no idea what this magic tree thing is about. Absolutely no idea. I know where this desert is. However, I have no idea why Siri is in this desert. No idea. Because uh, the scene with her in the desert actually plays a lot, a lot later. And by that time, she's already 16 years old. So that doesn't make a lot of sense for season one. That's more like season six or something like that. Jennifer, imagine the most powerful woman in the world. I'm gonna mention it again here, she looks a little bit like a crazy person and power is not really what Yennefer was ever after, so I don't really imagine how that would be any motivation for her, that her violet eyes are correct. But um, yeah, again, I, I, I don't really get what the motivation is. If they're just gonna make Yennefer a beast, fine. She's supposed to be a very powerful sorceress, one of the most powerful out there, but... Yeah, she's a little bit arrogant, distant, cold, but she's not, she doesn't strike me as someone who is, uh, yeah, very, very um, after being powerful. That, that was never really any of her goals, at least not one that was ever mentioned. Do you have what it takes? I like, however, that they go through the process of Yennefer being trained. That is, that's going to be interesting. Considering that I can see who this is, which actress this is, and the lines on her uh, chest plate here, this is very likely uh, the slaughter of Sintra, where Sintra gets overrun by the Nilfgaardians and uh, Kalante gets barely out of there alive. If you watched my last um, lore video, you know what this is about. So this is going to be the scene where uh, basically the Sintran army gets surrounded and destroyed by the North Guardians. She's why they came. You can't outrun destiny just because you're terrified of it. That's the talk of Geralt and Mausak, now that I know who that is, um, about when Geralt went to Sintra when Ciri was six years old and then left without actually taking her. It's coming. Find Geralt of Rivia. Now this is a problem for me as well. If you look at this scene, this is Kalanthe. This is her granddaughter. Now, is it just me, or do, do these two women not look anything alike? Hair color, eye color, skin tone, facial feature, any, anything. It, does this woman look like her grandmother? Especially since the women of Sintra, her mother and her grandmother, are supposed to share the eye color and the ashen hair. 
all of them had that. And why do I mention that? It's very important because it actually was supposed to indicate it was a sign of the elder blood flowing through their veins, which is extremely important for the lore behind Siri. And at the same time, the emerald eyes were indicated several times. That is very important. Um, Galante wore a green dress, always wore emerald uh, necklaces. To indicate her eye color, to to pronounce, uh, to um, yeah, kind of show off her eye color a little bit more, and she even gave uh, Gerald an emerald necklace as uh, a gift when he originally asked only for a handkerchief, also in that color, to uh, remind her, remind him of her beautiful eyes. That was all he wanted as a reward when she had originally promised him if he fulfilled the contract he could get anything he asked for so it is actually relevant for the lore that she would have emerald eyes she doesn't if they can fix up Jennifer's eyes then I wonder why can't they do that for this woman the, the, the hair color yeah whatever I could get over that I would prefer a wig but um, the eyes are kind of important and kind of so are the hair for the lore I don't get it why they couldn't simply get her a wig she's dead after the first season anyway so she's not going to be in that many scenes so why couldn't they just give her um, I'm not I don't have a problem with the actress but why couldn't just just put a wig on her and give her ashen hair like Siri so that you can actually see that they're related I, I don't get it. So there she tells her uh, that she's supposed to go and find Geralt of Rivia. She's obviously dying. And uh, actually, she's going to throw herself off the battlements of the tower. So I wonder whether they're going to show that because it's... Thunderline described it in the books as pretty graphic. Um, so I wonder whether they're going to go there. Um... We don't know whether she ever told Ciri to go find Geralt of Rivia. Actually, that happened kind of differently. She didn't go look for him. Uh, she was actually taken out of the city by someone and then later found. Um, so she didn't actually go actively looking for Geralt of Rivia. So I'm not sure how they're going to play that out. But that's not 100% what happened in the lore. That was probably the slaughter of Blaviken, where he goes against uh, the uh, people that are uh, waiting to slaughter the population of the town. Uh, that's where he gets his nickname, Butcher of Blaviken. I like that he's actually in civilian clothes here, kind of. Uh, well, civilian clothes. He's not in armor, that's what I mean. Uh, because he actually rushed to the market because he realized what was going to happen. Uh, so he probably didn't have time from breakfast, basically. So he bas probably didn't have time to actually get into armor. However, I have no idea what he's actually wearing here. That doesn't really look like medieval clothing. So whatever. But it makes sense that he's not in armor. I can't do this without you. This people... Yeah, there, there's actually people uh, naked in the background here. People have suggested that this is actually the May Day Eve festival, um, that this is um, the festival of uh, yeah May Day, where people get a little bit more casual um, and enjoy sexuality together. However, this was supposed to be a bunch of bonfires outside. It is supposed to be outside because Jennifer actually... Uh, and other sorcerers nearby as well caused actually some fireworks to go off in the air. So this being indoors makes absolutely no sense. Also, this was not supposed to be an orgy. This was supposed to be young couples dancing with each other. There was even a May Queen and a May King being crowned at these festivals. Just, you know, a normal folk festival. And then uh, when young folks dance together and drink a little and uh, the morals in this evening, as Jennifer put it, were a little bit more lax, then they would just go find some secluded spots between the trees and whatever. Gerald and Jennifer later went to their own secluded spot to first talk and then also make love. And they mentioned in the books that they actually had to walk a little while to actually find a place that wasn't yet occupied. So it's more, yeah, just... a 
nice party near the town for the young people, uh, young couples in their late teens, early 20s, probably most like, yeah, early 20s, probably very late teens, um, would just dance together, enjoy each other. And if they're in the mood for it, just go into the forest together, find a nice secluded spot and uh, do what needs to be done, so to speak. It was not an open orgy where everybody's naked and just fucking left, right, and center. So this is, uh, yeah, that if this is that, and I don't know of any orgy in the Witcher books, then this is completely misrepresented. Because that stuff that was going on in the back there, uh, if I'm seeing this right, there's even girls being with other girls. That, yeah, no, that does not make any sense. Unless this is a bathhouse scene somewhere, but that doesn't look right either. Yeah, to me, this scene feels completely off. People have said this is uh, Beltane, the Mayday Eve Festival. I, If that is what it's supposed to be, then it's completely wrong. No matter what you choose. This might also be at the court of Sintra, where I think this might even be Mausak, where Geralt is actually defending the Arcan of Erlenwald. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. It might be, because that's kind of the only court scene that I remember from the early books where he could be doing this. You'll come out. Again, this might be uh, people... Uh, oh yeah, there he is. That is actually the Urkion of Erlenwald. There he is. I didn't see him the first time. So yes, uh, the people of Sintra on the orders of the Queen are actually uh, trying to take him. Although there's actually also a major error here. The Urkion of Erlenwald is supposed to be in full plate armor. So yes, that's also wrong. Whatever. Uh, he was supposed to be a knight in full plate armor, including the helmet, which he then took off because he got tricked. And then they saw his his uh, hedgehog face. And Geralt is actually defending him, so that is correct. I still wonder why he's always wearing black, but that's typical Hollywood. Uh, everything has to be brown and black in medieval times, whatever. This should actually be a lot of more bright colors and stuff, but whatever. Uh, I think he was actually supposed to wear a bright colored doublet because he was kind of incognito uh, on this uh, feast. But I get now where this scene is, but again, a lot of things are wrong. He should be in full plate armor, that is specifically mentioned. You'll come out bloody. I'm assuming these are dryads. I'm not sure why they're using spears. They should actually be used bow and arrow, but I also don't know where what this fire is. If these are dryads and that is a fire, then this is completely wrong unless they didn't make the fire. And even if someone made the fire, I don't actually remember, but I'm pretty sure Geralt never made a fire. Making a fire in Brokilon is kind of a bad idea. I know they went to sleep one night. I'm pretty sure he didn't make a fire because, yeah, that, no. You do, you do not do that in Brokilon. <laughs> Unless those are not dryads, then I don't know who they are, who they're supposed to be. There's another black guy. If he's uh, who I um, think he's supposed to be one of Shrike's men, then yes, uh, Renfrey's men. Again, that doesn't work. They would all be from the north. Those people are not black. That might actually be uh, Yennefer fighting with the djinn. But to capture the djinn, I'm not, to, I don't, not sure what this is. This actually looks like a rock, so I'm not sure what this is. But could be Yennefer trying to capture the djinn. And that is a Kikimora. Again, Geralt eh, might look like this, um, drinking certain potions. This should be the cat potion, however, if he has these kinds of eyes. Fill the entire iris. Someone mentioned to me that this might actually be so bright because he has the cat potion. So we see what Geralt sees, kind of like in the games. That would actually make perfect sense because this actually looks like weird lighting. However, if this is actually the light of day through fog, 
then Geralt shouldn't be looking like this. Because if he looks like this, he specifically mentions in one story that even the light of dawn of the almost completely uh, uh, set sun is still almost way too bright for him in this state. So he only does that in pitch black darkness and in the night. Otherwise, he wouldn't even be able to see anything. He would be blinded using the cat potion like this. But again, maybe we see what he can see using the cat potion. That would make a lot of sense. So uh, this is the first monster that I think looks half decent. I think his armor, I've mentioned that before, looks incredibly cheap. I do appreciate that it uh, looks a little bit like the initial armor from Witcher 3 and a little bit like uh, the Raven armor from... Uh, the first game, which is inspired from the description from the looks, he has silver studded uh, stuff, although they only kind of mention the gaunt that's being silver studded, not the entire armor. Um, but they don't say it isn't either. So it, eh, yeah, it might be. It, 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 the design looks fine. It just looks a little cheap. That's all. Just doesn't really look like armor uh, in general again I mentioned I'm not really a fan of the costume design he also looks blonde here but I think that's just the lighting his hair color looks fine in the other shots uh, like here so yes overall um, I'm not really super happy with a lot of things I realize a lot of things here come from the lore a lot of the short stories are actually taking place here I like that Geralt is a little bulky, but I like that the actor is actually an enthusiast uh, of the games and the books. He read the books and he liked the game. So um, I can at least uh, expect him to give his all. He's very, very enthusiastic about playing this role, so I'm fine with that. He, I mean, he looks fine. He is a little bit too bulky and a little bit too uh, big a neck uh, for Geralt, but it's, it's fine. Um, I'm sure he will do good. Uh, the actress that plays Siri is also fine. Again, um, him, Mausak, little too young for my taste. I'd like him 10 years older, but it's fine. He would be great in, in Witcher 3 if, if he was this age here. And in the books, I think his age is never really mentioned. Uh, I will have to check that again. But it's fine for the most part. Triss absolutely doesn't work. Istrid doesn't work for me either. I'm going to go through an article here from the Radio Times. I'm going to put that link in the video description um, to that article. Uh, they mention uh, most of the cast here. Again, for the most part, I'm fine with these three. Jennifer, yeah. Actually, by now I'm less uh, invested in her skin color not being right than her actually looking still a little too young she looks like a teenager that's what Triss is supposed to look like Triss looking older than Yennefer that's exactly the wrong uh, the wrong uh, way around so that doesn't work for me uh, again he is fine a little bit too bulky for my taste but it's it's okay uh, I mean the witchers take stuff for mother growth um for me, that wouldn't go to this extreme, but it's okay. The sword also looks fine, in my opinion. Uh, this actress for, for Siri looks fine. That's that's totally okay. Again, about I said everything about Yennefer. Uh, this is, uh, yeah. I, I told you that's the uh, um, head of the sorceress's school. Queen Kalanthe, again... This actress would actually look perfectly fine with a different hair color. So why they didn't give her a wig, I have absolutely no idea. That would work absolutely f perfectly if they just gave her... The eye color isn't even that important, although I, if they can do it for Jennifer, then why not for her? I would even be fine with just changing the eye color because that's actually more important even than the hair color. But why dark this hair color like like how would she inherit this hair color if this is her grandmother i i don't i don't get it uh easter stuff they don't show him but i'm sure he'll be fine i hope that he is a little oh he's an icelandic actor yeah okay you see that uh, that works he's supposed to be from skellige so an icelandic actor works perfectly so why can they do that for some people and not for others i i just don't get it him for Mausak, again, he's a little bit young for my taste, but it might work fine. Perfectly perfectly okay. If they age him a little bit later, that's perfectly fine. This, however... Oh, I'm sorry. 
Um, let me uh, quiet that website. This, however, doesn't work at all. And I'm, tell I'm telling you repeatedly why. Not just she's black, she's actually from Tucson. If you follow my current um, uh, playthrough through Blood and Wine, you know what people from Tucson look like. She's also supposed to be a cousin of the uh, Duchess. You know what she looks like, so that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You know what she looks like in the games. And she is actually an affair of Geralt, because Geralt, in his depressed state, he's actually, in the time that he's in Toussaint, he's in a very depressed state. And he kind of has an affair with her because he misses Yennefer. And he pretends she is Yennefer because, according to the books, he looks a lot like Yennefer. So Yennefer is not completely white, but looks a little bit more like this. Fine. Make them both look like that. If you make one of them black, and she doesn't even have dark hair, the uh, black hair, she has a little bit more dark brown hair, and she has a completely different eye color, and everything about her face is completely different, doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. She needs to look very, very much like Yennefer. If you change one of them, you need to change the other one as well. Either they're both black or they're both Indian or whatever. But you can't change one of them and then make the other one a completely different ethnicity. Especially if she's supposed to be the cousin of a white woman. How does that work? No. Just no. This is bullshit. No, 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 no. This does not work. And it's, again, it's not about her being black. Make her Asian. Doesn't work either. Give her blonde hair. Doesn't work either. She has to, she needs to look like Yennefer. She needs to have certain similarities with Yennefer. And if that's not the case, her entire character doesn't make any sense. Because later on, Geralt would have an affair with her, which is entirely based on her looking like Yennefer. So that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This guy is Kahir. I will not say much about him than other than he's a Nilfgaardian who's actually not from Nilfgaard, but from other uh, one of the other conquered provinces from Nilfgaard. So he's not a native Nilfgaardian from the actual province of Nilfgaard, but he is from the empire of Nilfgaard. In that sense, he's the Nilfgaardian. And I mention that so specifically because he himself mentioned it mentions it very specifically in the games that he's not actually a born Nilfgaardian. And I mentioned that in my first lore video. In Nilfgaard, people actually are actually only called Nilfgaardians if they're actually from Nilfgaard. Just like in ancient Rome, probably people were only called Romans if they actually came from the city of Rome. You know, like a Spaniard was probably still called a Spaniard, even he was a Roman. He was part of the, a citizen of the Roman Empire, but he was from Spain. You know, like it's kind of like that. So he, he's fine, yeah, but if this is what Nilf Guardians look like, um, yeah, then that doesn't work because, uh, yeah, that province is also a part of Nilfgaard, or at least it's affiliated with Nilfgaard. So, yeah, no, just no. She's actually a sorcerer, is very highly respected in the Nilfgaardian Empire, and the Nilf Guardians don't like black people because they, uh, uh, and that's the mention, black people do actually exist in the Witcher world. And we actually know where they're coming from, where they come from. And those areas are considered by the Love Guardian Empire as barbaric. So they would not in the slightest tolerate anybody like her being this powerful inside the Love Guardian Empire. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Tris Marigold, again, doesn't make any sense whatsoever to have this hair color. Give her a wig, please. Make her red uh, red haired. Not not bright red, chestnut red. Like uh, I, I've actually looked up some hair colors. This might be a little bit too red, but if you actually Google chestnut hair, uh, that you find a various range of, of hair colors, some a little bit more reddish, some a little bit more uh, uh, brownish. And th this is probably the closest that you can get. Maybe this. Uh, this is probably the, the chestnut colored uh, stuff that uh, uh, Tris might be, maybe something like this. Um, that is probably what uh, Tris looks like. Again, this can also be chestnut, but that doesn't really work, especially not as dark as this, because she's also later called by Yennefer a ginger, and she's mentioned to have fiery red hair. The initial mention is specifically chestnut, but uh, that might be actually indicating the chestnut uh, coat of a horse. If you actually Google that, 
you will find that chestnut horses can actually be also a little bit more dark but most of them look like this so uh, yeah it should be a reddish brown it should not be completely red like in Witcher 3 but it should be a reddish brown so uh, yeah that's also completely wrong and um, there's also another mention why that should be the case um, Geralt actually mentioned specifically several times that red-haired um, women make him do stupid things. He has a strange attraction to red-haired women. We later found out that a possible reason is that his mother had actually the same hair color, that his mother had had red hair. He has an affair with Coral. He has an affair with Triss. And I think it's specifically referenced that that happened specifically because they have red hair. So if she doesn't red have red hair, there's no reason for Geralt to fall for her. Doesn't work that's why the eye color for her actually doesn't matter. That That's not important for lore reasons, unlike Yennefer's eyes. The violet eyes of Yennefer are actually very important. The uh, emerald eyes of Kalanthe and Ciri are very important. Her eye color, even the games get it wrong, doesn't matter. It's not specifically important for anything, so I, I don't really care. Her, her hair color, however, is important it's one of Geralt's weaknesses he falls for women with red hair makes stupid stuff with them he's sexually attracted to them so that's his, the entire reason for his attraction to Triss that doesn't happen she's also supposed to look like a teenager this woman this actress actually looks older than the actress playing Yennefer doesn't work doesn't work at all so uh, yes that's uh, I, don't, I don't get it they cast an Icelandic actor for a side character that's almost completely unimportant uh, East Hersach uh, who, who will die in the first season just like Kalanthe so I, I don't get it I, I really don't get it why can they cast uh, ethnic, ethnic correct looking characters for some people and then cast completely wrong characters for other people and even if they cast people that would be perfectly fine if they just had different hair color if they can give contact lenses to the actress or do it in the computer i don't know how they did it to yennefer's eyes why can't they give her a wig i, I just don't get it why why not not change her hair color if it makes sense for the lore the showmakers make such big deal out of oh yeah we're gonna stay very very true to the uh lore of the books well why didn't did you make uh, uh beltane into an orgy and why don't you give kalanthe a proper hair color i i, I just don't get it that would be so easy. Wouldn't change anything if you like this actress so much. It's perfectly fine. Just change your hair color. That happens in movies all the time. Actor is perfect, but the hair is wrong. Just give them contact lenses and a wig. Well, what's the big deal? Or make them dye their hair. I, uh, it probably wouldn't wouldn't be worth it for the actress since she's only going to be in the first season. I'm not sure how many scenes they're going to give to her. But uh, if she has a major role, yeah, make it dye her hair. If she doesn't like that, give her a wig. What's what? What's the problem with that? Why give her brown hair and then show her her granddaughter having completely different hair color? How does that work? A granddaughter that has different eye color and different hair color. Like, why? I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Does doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And yeah, uh, that's my thing. I like that they stick closely to the lore in some cases. I like that the characters are all present. I like some of the casting. I hate completely some other casting. And again, I mentioned if you call me a racist in the comments, you're out of here because that's not the issue. I don't have anything against specific races. I have something against them being in the wrong place because they don't look right for the character. There are black people in the Witcher world. There are dark-skinned people in the Witcher world. I'm not sure whether they're Asians in the Witcher world, but they might be as well. But... They all have their specific places in the lore. We know where they live on the continent. Mixing them all in here is just making this not even world diverse. The rest of the world doesn't care about this crap. It's just North America and mostly California that worries about this crap. Nobody else gives a fuck. Do you honestly think a Chinese person cares whether there are Chinese people in American movies? No, they don't. It's, nobody cares. This is Slavic lore, keep it Slavic and put the brown people and the yellow people and the red people and whoever you want to include here, put them where they belong in the world because they can exist in the world. They actually have a place in the world. 
put them where they're actually supposed to be and don't just change characters that are supposed to look completely different, especially not if their look is actually relevant to the lore. Like, uh, yeah, like Fringilla Vigo. That, that just doesn't make any sense. If she wasn't specifically mentioned to look like Yennefer, I wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, okay, Mega Black still doesn't work with Nilfgaard not liking those people, but I wouldn't even care that much. If it's not important for the lore, you can change hair colors, eye colors, I, I don't care. It's not important. Obviously, you can't change Geralt's white hair and stuff like that. That's lore relevant, but otherwise, I don't care. I wouldn't even care so much if Kalanthe either didn't have light hair or didn't have the, the, the eye color, but if she doesn't have both, then the genetic difference to Siri is a little bit too obvious for them to be related as granddaughter and grandmother. That, that just doesn't work for me. So even if I didn't know what they're supposed to look like, if I just see them and you tell me their granddaughter and grandmother, I'm like, what? wait, what? From that point alone, it doesn't work already. So again, I'm very happy with certain aspects. I like that they're actually going up to the Battle of Sodden. I really like that. I'm actually hoping they're going to show uh, the facing of the 22 sorcerers against Nilfgaard. Uh, it might actually be, I'm not sure, I have to reread that again, I only read that once, but I think uh, that uh, Frangilla Vigo was, was actually fighting on the other side, I'm not 100% sure about that though. So yeah, that might be very interesting seeing that, and I hope they stick at least to the lore in terms of the story. Um, I'm still not very happy uh, where they take unnecessary liberties like where do we have that scene with that with that strange orgy scene here with this crap that <laughs> unless this is a bathhouse then it would make sense although even then um yeah there shouldn't be women here at the same time as men the, when the men are here the women would actually be prostitutes so i i, I don't i don't <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weird, the, the liberties that they take in places when they at the same time say they're going to stick very, very closely to the books. <laughs> I, I, I just don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. If this is Beltane, it is completely misrepresented. So again, I, there's some very good parts, some very bad parts. At least I hope they're going to stick very closely to the story. So even if people don't look like they're supposed to and things don't match up and the costume design isn't very great, which I don't think it is, at least keep the story right so people can actually get the background lore to the games and, and find out what happened in the books for people that don't like reading books. But if you also take as many liberties with the story as you take with the characters... I've got to be a little bit angry. So, again, this is my opinion. You can now rip me apart again, but if you do that, do it for valid reasons and mention those reasons in the comments. If you th throw insults at me or just going to troll or be uh, a hater or going to accuse me of whatnot, you're going to be out of here. So uh, be aware of that. There are certain rules on my channel that I will enforce from now on. So with that, I'm going to leave it. Uh, we'll see where this goes uh, when it releases. I'm going to do my best to uh, go ahead and release my uh, further Witcher Lore series uh, videos pretty soon. Although I'm not so much under pressure since I now know the first season is only going to cover the short stories. So I have a little bit more time to actually go through the novels. But I'm going to try and possibly finish at least a couple before the series actually starts anyway. So until then, keep your heads up folks and I'll see you on the next one.